Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, I'm going to start a very interesting topic and it's very easy, which is definiteness is capacity or you can say is ma'rifatun or nakiratun. So how it will work and how you will learn it. Let's start inshallah ta'ala. Capacity or type of noun. There are two types of noun. Like uh, it can be any noun can be a ma'rifa definite or any noun can be a nakira indefinite. And uh, I will explain to you about these two things, which I already explained in the introduction lecture, the, I think the lecture one, but I want to explain to you again that anything, uh, if if we do, uh, when we do the general talk for everyone, it will be indefinite. Like in this picture, if I talk something, if I tell about these, uh, that they all um, people, they are including with the men and women they are standing and um, they are they're wearing the black shoes and they have um, what I, whatever I, i'm talking about them i'm talking about general but on the other hand the definite one when we talk for specific noun it will be definite like in this picture where i'm pointing one person with this hand if i'm talk if i talk about this person if i talk about that, that this this is a man he has a brown hair, he has a book in his hand, he has black shoes. So uh, it means I'm just talking about him. I'm not talking about the other people. I'm not talking about the other people. So uh, when I'm specific, uh, I'm talking about specific one person. So it means I, uh, it is definite. But when I talk about generally with uh, about everyone that they are looking towards in uh, in front and they look they are standing and uh, they wear the black shoes they all have the some have black hair some have brown hair so it means i'm talking generally i'm no specific i'm not specifying with any one person so this is called indefinite okay so first in this lecture i will explain you definite uh, in detail so in when i will explain you definite indefinite you will learn automatically okay so there are seven types of definite nouns that you should know that any noun in arabic language there will be the seven types okay how many types seven seven types are definite nouns in arabic language first one is mu'rif billam definite by al which in english we said that the when we use the the word it means definite in Arabic, we, you will see the al in the beginning of the word. And ismul alam, it means proper name. Third one is domair, pronouns. Ismul ishara, demonstrative nouns. Ismul mausul, relative nouns. Munada, vocative nouns. Mudaf ilal ma'rifa related to definite. So these seven categories or these seven types are definite. Uh, rest of all, if any noun is belongs with these categories, it will, will it will be considered as a marfa. But if any noun doesn't come in this category, it means it is indefinite then. Okay. So uh, um, what I will do now, these are seven types, but we will study the four types the one to four these four types we will study in two parts and the rest number five six seven these three types uh, of definite we will not study now when the time will come for study these topic inshallah we will discuss them but this is not the right time to discuss these topics so at least you should know at least the just the name that these names also the definite uh, noun uh, comes in the category of the definite nouns but we will not study it now because it's not the right time to study these things okay so inshallah very soon you will learn these three as well so i will remove at the moment these three types from these categories so only four left now okay so for two categories we will learn in this part part a lecture five part a and the two categories we will learn in the next lecture lecture five part b so i will i can give you the all four in one lecture but it will be the long lecture and it will be hard for you so it's good thing if i give you the little small lectures so it will be easy for you to digest okay so first of all we will learn the first type of the definite which is very very important and is used many times in quran so it's very very important okay it's called mu'rif billam definite by al 
this is the first main category for the definite noun in Arabic language. Let's start Morif Bilam. Nouns defined with definite article the. In English language, when you use the the in Arabic, you will see the al in the beginning of the word. Okay. The is equal to al. Okay. And al with any indefinite noun, it will convert into definite. Any any nakira noun, when you will add al in the beginning, it will convert into the definite. Okay. I will show you how. Like kitabun is it means any book, a book, a book. Okay, it's not the book, it's a book. It's meaning a book or any book. So when we add in the beginning, al, okay, al, and we will attach them. So it will be, uh, it will be like this, al kitabu. Now, did you notice one thing? Here it is kitabun, and now here is al kitabu. The tanween is dropped now. There is no tanween. It's not al kitabun. No, it can, it will never be like this. Never. The tanween will drop when the al exists. When al comes with the word, tanween will drop. Okay. So the definite article al and tanween cannot coexist. They can never be in the same word. They both things can never be. In, you will never see the al and tanween in the same word. Never ever. Okay. If there will be al, no tanween. If there is tanween, then no al will be there. Okay. So this is very important thing that when al will come, tanween will drop. It will be the single harka then. <clears throat> okay. Now I will give you one more example. Here is a boy, a Muslim or any Muslim. So it means indefinite. So it muslimun. It means a Muslim, any Muslim. When I will make it into the, the Muslim, I want to make it in the definite. So what we have to do the whole Arabic language, we have to convert, we have to add the al in the beginning. Al Muslimu. Muslimun will convert it into the Al Muslimu. Look at there is no tanween now. So in Muslimun, there is tanween which shows us that it is indefinite word in the Arabic language. Tanween is the main sign that it is indefinite, it is nakira noun, it is an indefinite noun. Okay, and in, when there is no tanween and the al in the beginning, when you see the al in the beginning, so it means it is definite now. Now it is not indefinite. Okay, so it is a marifa now. Now al Muslim, the Muslim, <clears throat> and tanween will drop because of the al. Okay, let's start do some practice now and you do with me. Rasulun. This is a nakira word. How I know that it is nakira? It is indefinite because of tanween. This tanween shows me, it, it gives me the sign that it is nakira. Now I want to convert into the uh, definite noun. I want to make it in marifa. So what I have to do? Just do with me. I will add al, al in the beginning. So it's ar rasulu. Ar rasulu. Next word is masjidun. Convert into the definite. Al Masjidu Salihatun, one more uh, um, uh, ism, the feminine noun we want to convert into the uh, definite. So, As Salihatu Kaumun Al Kaumu. Okay, I will discuss one more thing, but before, uh, if you notice, these all words are with Tanween. So, this Tanween shows us that it is. Nakira, it is indefinite. So Tanween shows that it is Nakira noun. It's a big sign. Tanween is a big sign to confirm us that it is indefinite noun. It is not definite. And when you saw the, uh, when whenever you see the Al in the beginning, whenever you see Al in the beginning, so it means it is definite noun. Okay, it is a marifa ism with Al and without Tanween. When you will see the al in the beginning, there will not be tanween in the end. Okay? Because al and tanween, they are enemy. They are enemy. They can't be in the one word. They can't be. Okay? They can't exist together. So there is al without tanween. One more thing I want to show you. If you notice, this lamb has no jazam on top of it. Like in al masjidu, there is jazam. Next lamb, there is no jazam on the top of it, but next one also has jazam. So what's the matter here? This lamb 
and this lamb, why they are different? Why there is they, this is not Allah Rasul? Why is not uh, our Rasul? Why there is Shadda here? So I will explain you in the next slide, inshallah. There are some moon letters and the sun letters, which is called in uh, if you know if you know the Tajweed rules, they must uh, told you about they must explain you about the Lamu Tarif. What is Lamu Tarif? Lamu Tarif is means same al. Alif and Lam. Okay, Alif and Lam. So moon letters means they it we will divide into two categories, which is Lam Kamri, moon letters, Lam Kamri, and sun letters means Lam Shamsi. Shams means sun, and Qamar means moon. So Lam Shamsi means sun letters. Okay. What is what's the difference between these two categories? When whenever you see Jazam on lam then it will be called lam kamri this lam will pronounce clearly okay this lam will pronounce clearly when you see the jazam on the lam so we have to pronounce this lam we have to come, pronounce this lam clearly like uh, examples al qamar al mu'min al hamd al fajr in all these examples, we, I pronounce the lam clearly. With al, I pronounce the lam. Okay. On the other hand, in the lam shams, when you see lam without haraka and there is shada, shada sign, after the lam, it is called lam shamsi, and this lam will be silent. This lam will not be pronounced at all. No, you will not pronounce like ashams. I'm not saying al shams. No, I will not pronounce the lam. I will say ash. I will directly join the alif with the sheen. Ash. Okay. Lam lam is totally uh, skip. Totally silent. Next word is <clears throat> ar rahman. So I'm not pronouncing the lam. As sabr. Ad dunya. So what, what's the difference? That sometimes you will see the lam with jazam and lam without any haraka, but you will see the shadda after that, after that lam. So they both lam are definite lam, okay? They both will be the lamul mu'rif uh, bil lam, or you can say the lamu tarif, okay? So they both are different. You you can't you don't say that oh, okay only this lam it means it is marfa and it is no marfa no it is marfa as well okay ashams is also marfa noun because there is al in the beginning it is alif and lam in the beginning okay but lam is not uh, we will not pronounce it we will skip it we will uh, drop it we can say that we will not pronounce it we, it will be the silent lam but it's still there. We are writing here, so it is definite, okay? <clears throat> All right. They both are definite. Either you will see the lam uh, with jism or without jism, they both are definite, okay? In next, in this chart, if you notice, so there is no al in the beginning. We can't see in any word here. We, the all words are without al. So it means it is indefinite nakira. Sadiqun, and you can see the clearly tanween in the end double uh, haraka so it shows me that it is indefinite but in the musanna and jama there is the in musanna and jama as i already told when i explained these lectures that musanna and jama salim it, it, they, they can never have the tanween in the end okay they can never have the tanween in the end so you will think that how you will know that it is nakira or not because there is no tanween but if there is no tanween there is no al as well Okay, I will show you now. <clears throat> In next slide, I want to convert the same word into the definite. So it will be as sadiqu. So look, as sadiqu. Al is there. Alif and lam still is there. If there is no jazam, doesn't matter. It is still lamu tarif. It is morif bil lam. It is definite. Okay, it is lam shamsi. It means. Next is as sadiqa. Look, tanween is dropped now. As sadiqi. So in for the mufrat for the singular word you can easily find that tanween will drop. But for the musanna and jama, how you will differentiate that it is marfa or not? That you will see the al in the beginning. If there is no tanween, no problem. But you will see the if you see the al in the beginning, it is definite. If there is if there is no al in the beginning, so it's indefinite. <coughs> 
الصادقون الصادقين so it is definite because of alif al lam in the beginning in this slide i will on show you the both charts together the on your um, left side is a indefinite on your right side is in the is definite is marifa so what's the difference even i will show you the next slide now you can take the screenshot of it one is the marif bilam is is a definite chart and uh, the one is for the uh, indefinite chart for the same word okay and this chart look now i changed little bit uh, um, the difference between the, i i uh, i convert the definite and indefinite both in the same in one slide okay for the mufrad for musanna for jama for rafa for nasab and for jar so this slide is very important for you you can take the screenshot for it for the mufrad for the singular look tanween and no tanween because of al because of al tanween drop so you can notice that mu'minun is indefinite al mu'minu is definite and in musanna and in jama look what's the difference between how you will know that it is definite or not if it is there is no al in the beginning so it's indefinite if there is al in the beginning so it is definite same for the musanna all and the jama al and um, uh, i want to highlight these these two examples which mostly used in the quran which is the rafa sound and it can be the ina sound either it can be the nasab or jar so Mu'minuna is nakira. Al mu'minuna is marfa. How is marfa? Because al in the beginning. Mu'minina is nakira. Al mu'minina is marfa because al in the beginning. So there is no tanween in both cases. There is no tanween. Okay. So you have to differentiate just because of al. If there is al alif lam in the beginning, then marfa. If there is no alif lam, then is nakira. Simple is that. Okay, there is one uh, a chart. I make one chart for the Mu'annas, for the feminine. Al-Muslimatu, Al-Muslimata, same like all of this. And if you want, you can make the Nakira chart as well. So then you have to drop the Al from the uh, beginning and it will convert into the indefinite. Okay, as I already explained you that when I will explain you about definite, automatically you will learn the indefinite as well. Okay. Except these seven categories, which I explained in the beginning of the lecture, the seven categories of the definite noun, except the uh, uh, rest of all, everything will become in the category of the indefinite. This is the chart when I was student and I was learning these things. So I done this for my homework, the word Sabir and um, for muzakkar and for mu'anna sabiratun so i will choose for rafa and sabanjar with the definite and indefinite so it must be very small font i know um but i will try to convert into the pdf and i will try to uh, add in the description box okay so you can take the screenshot for it because i use many words for both marifa and nakira for Muzakkar and Mu'annas, for Wahid, Musanna, Jama, Rafa, Nasabjar. So in detail. One more page for my homework. In, in here, uh, why? what's the difference here? Because I use the Jama Mukassar here. In the last slide, it was a Jama Salim. And here I use some words for the Jama Mukassar. So I want the practice for both, for the Jama Salim and for the Jama Mukassar. Okay. All right. Our Morif Bilam definite by Al, which is very important, which is the main category for the definite noun, is done already. Alhamdulillah, we done it. Next one is the Ismu Alam, proper name. Let's start this one, which is the proper name, as you know, the because of the name that what is proper name. Let's start. Proper names means it can be the name of a person, like Nuhun, Musa, Muhammadun, Ibrahim. Any name of uh, any person uh, will become in the category of the proper name. It will be the definite, okay? And tribes, race, or countries like these names. So it will be in which use in Quranic. Samudu is a name of a uh, qom uh, or uh, race. Adun, Quraishun, Bani Israel. So these all names are um, uh, used as a proper name. Name of places like Misr, ba 
Pakistan, Arafat, Mecca. So the name of place, uh, or it can be the any, any uh, country or any uh, city. It uh, come in the category of the proper names. <clears throat> Achha, one thing uh, now I want to one thing I want to explain to you here again. If you notice Nuhun Muhammadun, can you see the tanween in the end? So you must notice if there is tanween, how it can be the definite then? Because there is tanween in the end. And as I already explained to you before, that uh, any word end with tanween, it means it is nakira, it is indefinite. So these words also have tanween. They also have the double haraka. So why they are definite? Why they are not indefinite? So let's start now. Why they are not? <clears throat> Every tanween noun is indefinite except, except proper names. Okay? This is an exceptional case. This is an exceptional case that in proper names, you will see the tanween in the end, but they will not be indefinite. They will be definite, but their usage in Quran is very less, very less. So, I will show you now how. Rasulun, a messenger, messenger or any messenger. I'm not talking about the particular, any specific messenger. So, it can be the any messenger. Okay? But if I say Nuhun, Nuhun is also Rasul, okay? He is also Rasul, but look at the Rasulun has tanween. Nuhun is also, he, uh, this name also has tanween. But it is because it is a proper name, it is Ismu'alam. So we will not say that it is indefinite. No, it is definite because it is a proper name, okay? It is a proper name. If proper name has the tanween in the end, still they are definite, they are not indefinite, okay? Next one. Nabi Jun, a prophet or any prophet, any prophet. But if I give you the name of Nabi, like Muhammadun, Muhammadun, this name also has the Talween in the end, but it's not Nakira, it is Marifa because it is a Ismi Alam, it is the uh, proper name. All right, next one, Waladun, a boy or any boy. But when I say Hamidun, it means I I take the name or I'm, pro I'm, uh, I'm uh, pronouncing the name of the boy. Hamidun. So this name, this name is also definite because it's a proper name. It's a proper name of a boy. Okay. So this Tanween doesn't matter if you see the Tanween in the end. If they are proper name, they will be definite. Okay. Qawmun. Any nation, any comb or a comb. Okay. But if I say... Adun, because Kome Ad, you must know the this uh, Kom Samud, Kom Ad, because these two names used many times in Quran. It you will see the Tanween in the end. Okay, you will see the Tanween in the end, but it's not indefinite. It is definite because it is a name of a tribe, it is a name of the Kom, it is a name of any nation. Okay, so it's a proper name. Uh, either is uh, you see the, the tanween in the end, but it is definite. So only these few examples, I I think it's enough for you to explain to you that proper names. If you see the in proper names, if you see the tanween in the end, they will be considered as a definite, not indefinite. But I will say that only I think three four percent these type of words you will see in the Quran. Mostly 97, 98 percent of tanween words will be indefinite. Okay, mostly tanween uh, nouns, uh, tanween um, nouns will be you will see the as a indefinite. Only when you see the proper names like nohon, adun, when you see these type of words, it means they are definite, not indefinite. Let's do some practice now. These two words which I'm highlighting now, if I ask you, are they definite or indefinite? So I hope you will give me the answer. They are definite because you see the alif and lam in the end. Alif and lam in the, oh, so not end, in the beginning. You will see the, because you can see the alif and lam in the beginning. So they are definite, not indefinite. And if you notice what's the difference, why there is jazam here and why there is no jazam. 
so uh, are they both are different yes they both are different this is lam shamsi and this is lam qamri and how you differentiate between lam shamsi and lam qamri because when you see the jazm it means lam qamri when you don't see the jazm and in the next letter you see the shadda on top of it so it means it's lam shamsi lam shamsi means you will not pronounce the lam you will say as salihat not al salihat as salihat this is the tajweed rule okay basically and here you will say al anhar al i pronounce the lam so they both are definite okay all right the al anhar is jama muqassar and this is jama salim for the feminine <clears throat> next all these yellow words if i ask you they are definite or indefinite i hope you will give me the answers very quick that you will see that you will see, because you can see the tanween in the end you can see the tanween in the end so it means they are indefinite. They are nakira nouns. Okay, they are nakira nouns because they you can see the tanween. And you can see the tanween for the um, kasra, kasra tain, fata tain, and dhamma tain. So all three types of the uh, tanween, it can be the dhamma tain, fata tain, or kasra tain. So it means they are nakira. There is tanween in the end. Next word, khaliduna. Is it nakira or marifa? So, because there is no tanween in the end, so how you will know that oh, there is no tanween and there is no al as well? So, because they, they, it is jama salim and jama salim or musanna, they can never have tanween in the end. So, how you will know that it is na nakira or marifa? So, I give you the tip that I already give you that if you see the alif lam in the beginning, then it is marifa. If you don't see the alif and lam in the beginning, so it's nakira. So it, this time, khaliduna is nakira noun. It is indefinite, okay? Because there is no alif and lam in the beginning. <clears throat> Few more examples. <coughs> Kamudu wa adun. Are they marifa or nakira? Definite or indefinite? I hope you will give me the answer. They are definite because they are the proper name. They are the name of the tribes or you can say the name of the nation. Samud and Ad, they are the name of the nation. If I say, why the Adun has Tanwin in the end? If there is Tanwin, it should be indefinite. But you should say then, no, I learned that if there is Tanwin for the, in the end for the proper name, it still it will be the definite noun because it's a proper name. So Tanwin doesn't matter for the, uh, for the proper names. Okay, next one. Al Qariya, Al Muslimun, Al Qasitun, Al Munafiqin, Al Munafiqati, Al Kuffar. So all these words are definite or indefinite. You will give me the answers, I think, in seconds, inshallah, ta'ala, because they are definite. You can see the lam, alif and lam in the beginning. So it is definite. Okay. Next one. Khalidina. Khalidina, are they definite or indefinite? So you will give me the answer, inshallah, it is indefinite because there is no alif and lam in the end. Look in the al munafiqina Khalidina, they both are ina sound. But what's the difference in both of these? Al is here, so it is definite. There is no al, so it is no definite, it is indefinite. They both are ina sound, but one is definite, one is indefinite. Okay? Next, adabun muqimun. Marifa or nakira? Nakira. Because you can see the tanween in the end. There is no al in the beginning and tanween in the end. So, it clearly shows us that it is indefinite. It is nakira noun. They both are nakira noun. Okay. So, our practice is done. Alhamdulillah. I hope you understand this lecture. And now come to the homework time. From this uh, few ayat, you have to uh, circle only the definite noun. For the definite noun, you can color the green one. And for the indefinite, you color the yellow one. Or if you don't have the color or you can't uh, do like this, what you can do, take a paper and pen, um, make a column, one column for the definite, one column for the indefinite. And for the right side, you write the uh, definite words. On your left side, write the indefinite words. From these ayat you have to choose the definite and indefinite words so it's totally up to you how you will do your work for the next page i wrote some um words here in, in i mix with with the with the singular with the plural feminine and the um, 
mansuba majroor sound or the rafa sound so i try to mix these things you have to convert them into definite now okay you have to convert them definite so you i teach you how to convert them to definite so i hope you can do your homework very easily this is the lecture alhamdulillah is done the half part is done next part inshallah we will do the in the next lecture make dua <clears throat> subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh